Good morning, Cliffy family and online community. Good to have you with us this morning. Listen, we're going to do like we always do. We want to welcome you to our worship service. Get your family, call your friends, get your iPad, get your legal pad, get your Bible, your phone. Whatever it is, we want you to be engaged. Sing the songs, pray the prayers, pay attention to the lesson. We are praying that it be a blessing to you. Stay with us because we have some announcements for you at the end. So we pray that this sermon will be a blessing to you. God bless you. On word rejoicing, I tread life. You know that higher I'm climbing each passing. Oh, hilltop of glory now rise in view. And where all shall be made new. We're climbing hilltops of glory. I now can. Oh, brother, oh, brother, won't you come go with me? Yes, Lord, I'm safe from the mountain. I soon shall stand on. For you for our, uh, announcements and to uh, for prayer requests as well. We start off with prayer requests. Um, uh, please keep in mind and, and continue to pray for our sick, of course, uh, our, our, uh, those who are in uh, care facilities of some type, our brothers and sisters that are in some type of care facility or who are hospitalized. Uh, continue and remember to continue praying for our first responders and our frontline workers who are working so hard during this a very trying time, very stressful yeah. time in our yeah. society, in our, in our communities, as well as our government officials as well, local, uh, state, and federal. And um, uh, specifically, we have some specific requests we'd like for you to uh, uh, pray for, uh, keeping in mind uh, those brothers and sisters who have asked for prayers uh, in weeks past and who still require prayer. We're asking for a prayer for our brother Pouncy, who has been hospitalized at the Medical City uh, on Forest Lane in 75. Um, brother Pouncy has been uh, diagnosed with uh, bone cancer. So um, please uh, pray for him, pray for the Pouncy family, uh, for his healing and well-being, and for the peace of mind for his family as well. Uh, continue to pray, pray, uh, uh, pray for uh, uh, Doris Jarvis, that is the mother of Sister Askey, um, as well as the entire Askey family. Uh, Sister Ozzy Young uh, lost her grandson. His name is Tyrese Young, and uh, he uh, worshipped over in Fort Worth and what was the Stop Six Church of Christ. Um, and so please continue to pray for Sister Young, the services, uh, or to the extent that they had services for him, uh, would have been last week. So just keep her and that family in your prayers. Uh, Sister Esther Ray Smith requests prayers for herself and her family. Uh, she lost her uncle uh, who lived in Michigan. Uh, so please uh, keep that family in your prayers as well. Uh, if there are any prayer requests, uh, you can call and leave a message uh, for your prayer request. Um, confession of sin, prayer requests, uh, praying for each other and one another. Uh, you can call and leave that prayer request at the uh, church's phone number at 972 274 5102. Uh, you can also uh, go to the Cliff View Church of Christ website, uh, cliffviewcofc.com. Um, and at the very bottom of that home page, uh, there's a link there that says prayer request. And you can uh, uh, click on that link and leave your prayer request there. Um, you can always continue uh, to call and contact each other, uh, pray for one another, um, and, 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 and 
give over your cares and your, your concerns and uh, give your, communicate your prayer requests to one uh, uh, of the saints personally that you have a personal relationship with. And so uh, just keep that in, your, uh, in mind also. Uh, keep in mind that you uh, should always talk with um, and pray with one another as you go out through your day-to-day -day lives. Please continue to give um, to the ongoing work of the church. Uh, the Lord's work has only increased, uh, as well as the uh, world's need to hear that word. So uh, you can give on our website by going to give on the, on the website. There's a give icon on the top right of that page. And also if you're on YouTube, um, if you go over to where it says um, uh, about, um, there's a column there, uh, and you can go there, and to the left there's something that says links. And that will take you to the giving page so you can give as well. It's very easy uh, to get that done and to support the Lord's work. Uh, and so and you can do it from home. You can do it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, any day, as many times as you like. All right. So um, please heed the shelter in place order. Um, to release some stress, you can always uh, listen to our, uh, our messages, our, our Bible, uh, our Wednesday Bible class is, is on the website also. Um, since we're sheltering in place, I don't know uh, if you have, uh, you can go to our Facebook and maybe post a picture of your face mask. Uh, this one is mine, uh, it's reversible. Uh, maybe we ought to have a face mask contest, uh, but do that. Um, on Facebook, like us, tell your best jokes, let us know the scriptures that you're uh, studying and that your uh, people that you're praying for also. Um, and tell us how God and tell the world how God has affected your life. That those would be some good things as, for, as well as exercise, praying, meditation, and studying God's words too. They, they'll definitely relieve the stress that you may be feeling by sheltering in place and being confined. Please plan on spending um, a little more time in, uh, on, with us next week as uh, at the end of the uh, message, uh, the leadership would like to um, explain and discuss uh, with the uh, congregation via uh, uh, online message um, how Cliffview is going to go forward in this time of pandemic, uh, epidemic, and so uh, they're going to have some uh, information for us to share with us on next week. So if you wouldn't mind, just prepare for an extra uh, 20 to 30, well, about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, of extra time uh, in our message on next week for that information. Um, they will be discussing issues related to how we will continue in fellowship. Um, they also uh, should speak to us regarding um, the, uh, our pulpit minister uh, search. And so it would be some good information for all of us to have. Uh, Wednesday Bible class is being broadcast on our YouTube channel right now. Uh, we are studying the book, uh, we're studying from the book, The Game Plan. Last week we studied giving. So please um, try and uh, be a part of that also. And uh, those are all of the announcements and prayer requests that I have. Thank you for listening. time let us pray dear lord we come this morning we thank you for each and every blessing you bring into our lives we thank you for letting us see another day that was not promised the lord we ask that you wrap your arms around your children the congregations of churches of christ all over the land and country we know that these are trying times things are happening that we have no control over and we just don't know how they're going to come out. But we know as long as our hands are in your hands, you work things out. We just ask that you continue to bless and keep us, keep us safe. Let us understand that times are not like they used to be. We're living in a new age. Different things are happening. So just keep us positive as we go day by day. We just ask that you continue to bless and keep us. Forgive us all of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
There's a happy land of promise over in the red beyond Where the saved on earth shall soon the glory share Sharing where the souls of men shall live on forevermore And everybody will be happy over Lord, we're singing every year Everybody will be so happy Let us bow. Father, we are so thankful to you for this day and for all that you have done for us and are doing. God, we pray that we may realize that you are God and that you are God all by yourself. And Lord, we come before you in the this way that we know how. God, we pray for the world in the midst of this pandemic. But God, we see your mighty hand and God, we realize that in your word, you told us that nations must realize that they are but men. And Lord, we ask that you would continue to strengthen us. We ask you would forgive us of our sins by word, thought, or deed, omission, or commission, anything that would hinder this prayer. God, we pray for the family of Andre Gardner who passed this morning. God, we pray that you would bless that family and give them strength in these trying times. And God, we thank you for the prayers on behalf of my brother. And God, we thank you that you brought him out of that coma. And God, we are so thankful for his convalescence. We know that it was only because of the prayers. And Lord, we pray for Clearfield. We ask, Lord, that you would bless us according to your will and your way. God, we ask all these things in the will and power of the Holy Spirit and in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Bless the Lord God of Israel and all the people of God said amen. We are thankful to God for this day and, and what he has done and is doing. I want to make a very quick observation uh, that uh, the proper way to wear your mask is to cover your nose. Not under your nose, but you must cover your nose. Uh, we uh, are looking at uh, Mark 16 and 18, and, and uh, I, uh, you know, I, I've got to say this, that we have a member that was, was just into spraying and wiping down the seat, the pew that she was on, and and uh, uh, not only here at the church, but, but even at Lou Bay's, when we go out to Lou Bay's, she's wiping down things. And, and we thought that was, you know, I thought that was really weird. But now I see that that, that was before this pandemic. And now we see that that is so important. And I want to caution the church that you cannot be too cautious in the midst of this pandemic. All people have to do is call from you, and they can be asymptomatic, and you will you will uh, uh, come down with this COVID-19. And it's just tragic the way things are happening. And the scripture says, uh, Mark uh, 16 and 18, I'm gonna go to verse 17. Mm -hmm. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. But will lay, they will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Uh, one of the things that we we're finding out in the midst of this pandemic was that the president was very much aware of the onslaught of what was happening in China and uh, uh, the intelligence community told him months and months ago uh, that uh, there was a uh, pandemic in 
China, Wuhan, China, and uh, and the intelligence community also told him that uh, they needed to be prepared here, and also that the virus was weaponized by China, Russia, and Iran. And when the president came on the news, he was talking about the Chinese virus. I don't know if y'all remember that. And China said, well, you know, America, your hands are not clean. The military in America was involved too. And it says to us, and I, I want to make be very clear, I want to talk about healing. I want to use healing as a, a, as a subject and, and then uh, the value of hope as a subtopic and redemption as a sub subtopic. One of the things that I think people need to understand that God allows things to happen so that people may realize that he is God. And I think a lot of this is, and I'm not being political, I'm just speaking uh, as I see it. Uh, whenever you have a, as I was watching the president at a news conference, look up and said, I guess I'm the chosen one. And then, uh, not long after that, he made the statement, I don't care who makes this statement, that I've done more for Christians than Jesus. And shortly after that, I don't know if you were aware of this, but there was a blog that was over the White House, and the jets were scrambled, and they went over, they got over the White House, and with the, the pilots looked down, they couldn't see anything, but on the radar, they could see this massive blob over the White House. And I said when I heard that that, that was the hand of God, uh, the righteous indignation of God, ready to deal with America, but it's more pervasive than that. God is dealing, and no one but God is able to make the entire world stand still. And, and it's making us go back to our core. It's making families, instead of running out, getting, it's making families spend family time. And, and while we're in this stand down and be still, we need to draw closer to God. And, and in Mark, he's telling us, and, and it's important now that you realize that these signs were promised to the apostolic community Matthew 10 and 1, 2 Corinthians 2, uh, 12 and 12, and it was not to all believers in all ages, 1 Corinthians 12, 29 and 30. All of these things uh, that he talks about here were except of the drinking of poison, someone uh, even with, except for the poison, someone in this era dealt with. You remember in the 28th chapter of Acts in verse 5 that Paul, after he survived the shipwreck, and uh, he went to the village and went to this island, and as he was gathering wood for the fire, that a, that a, vi that a viper came out of the wood that he had prepared for the fire and bit him. Let's go back to the book. I, I, I want to make sure that we, we understand that when we talk about healing, we're talking about the power of God. And God can do anything but fail. We find here in Acts 28 and 5 that uh, when they uh, made it to the island, that Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire. A viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. We want to go to the book. So when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, no doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he has escaped the sea, yet justice does not allow him to live. But he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. However, they were expecting that it would swell up and suddenly fall down dead. But after they looked for a long time and saw no harm come to him, they changed their mind and said that he was a God. But Mark is saying to her that if you uh, 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 take up a serpent and if a serpent bites you, 
you will not suffer. Now this was for the apostolic community. Let's go back to healing means that it's the process of making or become sound or healthy again. We realize that America, not only America, but the world is in disarray because of this pandemic. And so much is happening under the curve, and so much is happening that it, it makes me shudder that there are no people in control. When, when uh, uh, China, America sent a shipload of uh, PPEs to China, and China turned around and sent that same load of, maybe not the same, but sent another shipload of PPEs to America. And then Russia sent a, a, a shipload of uh, PPEs, and we thought America was, that China, that Russia was doing it as, as an act of kindness, but we had to pay for that. And no one told America that you need to check those things out to see if they were carrying the virus. Y'all remember the story about the Trojan horse, how they sent the Trojan horse and, and they thought that, you know, everything, we, we need to understand that God is allowing this to happen so that men and women, boys and girls, may realize their undone condition. The Bible says in Exodus 15, 26, For I am the Lord who heals you. And we have to understand here that, that God is the only one that can heal this land, can heal this entire world, only God. Jeremiah 17, he says, Now, O oh Lord, if you heal me, I will only be healed. If you save me, I will be truly saved. My praises are for you alone. He goes on also to let us know that when we confess our trespasses in James 5 and 16 to one another and pray for one another that we may be healed. Therefore, he says, the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. And in this time of pandemic, we must continue to pray to God that we may have healing. If you believe that, say amen. amen. He goes on now, and, 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 and here again we go to 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. He says, if my people who are called by my name, I know you heard that before, will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and then I will forgive their sins, and heal their land. And that's what we need in America, we need healing. And, and, and I want you to understand something, that God doesn't have to respond to us. If you look at Deuteronomy 1 and 45, God can do it. People say, well, you know, God didn't, he, he doesn't hear. God hears, and there are times when God refuses to do something. He says, now, then you return when they, they disobeyed God, when the Israelites disobeyed God. And then you, Moses was saying, then you return and were before the Lord, but the Lord would not listen. He would not listen to your voice, nor give ear to you. And that's the situation that we don't want to be in, where God will not hear, he will not listen to our cries. If you're in a position where God will not listen to our cries, we're in a bad situation. And now I want to talk about the value of hope. Hope, the value means to be important or be beneficial, have a high opinion of a person's principle or standard behavior, one's judgment of what's important in life. Hope is a feeling of expectation and a desire for certain things to happen. We have to realize that Jesus is our hope. If you believe that, say amen. Go and look. The Bible tells us that, that Jesus, since Jesus is our hope, we have to realize that there is nothing that God cannot do. But we have to humble ourselves and turn from our wicked ways, and we have to realize that it's only because of God that we're here.
here right now. I mean, you believe that? Say amen. We have to understand in the midst of this pandemic, we still have to find time to praise God and glorify God. And, and Mark, Luke says here, then it happened as he was, Luke 18, 35, then it happened as he was coming near Jericho that a certain blind man sat by the road begging, and hearing a multitude passing by, he asked them what it meant. Here's a blind man, and he's hearing so much commotion of all the people going around, and he asked, what's going on? So they told him that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. And he cried out saying, Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me. And that's what America needs to cry out today. Lord God, have mercy on us. He goes on to say, then those who went before warned him that he should be quiet. And you have to understand that this man continued to cry out all the more, saying, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he come here, he asked him, saying, what do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his, his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people saw it, they gave praise to God. And the time for the church is not to sit down. The time for the church is not to put our head in the sand. The time for the church is to minister to the needs of the people. We need to be more proactive than what we are right now. People, if you look at TV and you see the lines and lines of people that, that just, just going and trying to get food, we realize that we are in the midst of not only a recession, but we're headed for a depression. And anytime people get to bragging about saying that the economy is so good and it's this and that, when you stop glorifying God and start looking at yourself, God moves. And that's what's happening now. It's a move of God that people may realize that we need God now more than ever before. Amen. We're in the midst of a plague, calling a pandemic, in the midst of a plague. And, and, and when you focus and your focus is only on money, it's your God, God will move. We find here, the Bible tells us that God is a God of healing. He is a God of deliverance. But there are some conditions that we have to adhere to if we want God to heal us. If we want God to value us and to, to value what we're saying and the value of hope, we all must have that expectation that this pandemic will soon pass away. But there are some things we have to understand that it is a new norm. Yes, things ain't gonna never be the same. The Bible tells us that Jesus Christ was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he asked God, would you let this cup pass? And the reason he was able to say this was that he knew what was in the cup. He knew that suffering was in the cup. He knew that betrayal was in the cup. He knew that the cross was in the cup. And then he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. We have to understand here that in order as we celebrate Easter and realize that it's, a, it, it, it's about the fact that every, I want you to know this, that every Sunday morning is Resurrection Sunday. Yes, that not just this one day, but every Sunday morning we come together to wish you God in spirit and in truth. And wherever you are today, you need to realize that God is able if we turn from our wicked ways, humble ourselves and pray, and God will heal the land. Man, man. Gotta know that. Man. Don't know anything else. You gotta know that. And you got to have a relationship with God before the pandemic. All right. 
You got to have a relationship with God before you're not able to pay your uh, your mortgage or your apartment rent. You got to have a relationship with God before you go through the storm and God will give you refuge in the midst of your storm. You believe that? Say amen. The Bible says Hebrews 9 and 22 that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And you have to also understand in my conclusion that the cross that Jesus hung on was for somebody else. You remember how Pilate says that I, I, I've got Barabbas here and Jesus. Now, now which one should I give to you? They say, give us what Barabbas and crucify Jesus. He died on the cross for somebody else. He went up that old rugged cross for somebody else. They put him on the ground and they nailed nails in his hands, but the Bible says that he had already said that if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. That's what we gotta realize. That's the hope that we've got to have. That's the value of our hope. And that what was, that's the only thing that will bring healing to the not only America, but the entire world. America is more vulnerable than America has ever been before. And our dangers have not diminished. And our vigilance cannot be relaxed. We got to understand that if God turns his back on us, we are in trouble. We're in trouble. Man. That's why when he died, he died. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. One thing you have to understand in the cross work, Paul tells us that the cross spelled the ultimate doom of Satan and his evil host of fallen angels. Genesis 3, 15, John 12 and 31, John 6 and 11, Hebrews 2 and 14. While his body was dead, his living divine spirit actually went to the abode of the demons and he announced his triumph over sin. He announced his triumph over Satan. He announced his triumph over the devil. He announced his triumph over the grave. And he announced his triumph over hell. What a great God that we serve. He went beyond the earth. He went beyond the grave. He went beyond death to the very pit of the demons. And just like he was in the heart of the earth, for three days. But the Bible tells us that he got up early, early, early after break of dawn on that Sunday morning. He got up, he didn't stay in the grave, he got up out of that grave. And not only that, but, but I wanna say this, I want you to hear this also, that when he was on the grave and when he said it is finished, Satan thought he meant I am finished, but he have not finished. He's still the same yesterday and forever. If you're not here, if you're here, and if you're standing at a dead and dangerous distance of God, if you need healing in your relationship with God, if you need healing in your family, if you need healing in your body, God is a healer. If you believe that, say amen. And then if you got to have hope that whatever happening, God is still more powerful than any pandemic, any coronavirus, any COVID-19, God is absolute. And Jesus got up out of that grave with all power. And that's what I love about him. He has all power. There's nothing that he cannot do. And all he wants us to do is come to him. And when we come to him, we must believe that he is. The Bible said, without what? Faith. It is impossible to please him. First of all, we must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. There are ways, and people talk about the doors of the church, the doors of the church have been open a long time. Amen. When they step, the doors are open and they have not been closed. If you're here and you need to have a relationship with God, you can do it now by hearing the word of God. Believe in Hebrews 11, see, repenting of your sin, and repentance means to turn and walk away 
for whatever sins. If you die in your sins, where God is, you cannot come. Then you gotta confess him. Then you gotta go down to him in that little bed of baptism. Go down the center and come up a new creature in Christ Jesus. Yes, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood that saved me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. And I know, I know, I know it was the blood. He was on the cross. He died and, and they pierced him in the side of the bleeding, bleeding side of Calvary. He got up out of that grave with all power. You want to be in that number that no man can number and we stand and sing the Savior's invitation. Know that it was nobody but the blood. Nobody but him dying on the cross and the shedding of blood. He brought peace between God and man. I know it was the blood, was the blood, I know it was the blood, was the blood, I know it was the blood, and for me, oh, and one day when I was lost, and he died, to another important part of our service, the communion, where we remember our Lord and Savior, remember his life here on earth, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. I will be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 23, verses, chapter 23, I'm sorry, I'll be reading from uh, chapter 11, verses 23 to 25. Mm -hmm. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, which he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are truly grateful for this opportunity to assemble here and remember our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We pray, Father, that you would bless these symbols and bless all who partake, that we will be worthy. This is our prayer in the name of Christ Jesus. Let us all say, Amen. Amen. You know, after becoming a Christian and experiencing the wonderful blessings that are found in Christ, we must be careful to never forget that it is only through the blood of Jesus that we are who we are today. What can wash, wash away? We have come to another important part of our service where we give back a portion of what we've earned. I will be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. Now concerning the collection for the, for the saints, as have, all, have given orders to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, that there be no gathering when I come. Let us pray for the offering. Heavenly Father, we are truly grateful for this opportunity to assemble and give back a portion of what we've earned. We pray, Father, that you will bless this offering. It will be used to teach and preach your word throughout this community, throughout the world. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us all say, Amen. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me each and every day. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. And don't you know?
most holy and righteous God which are in heaven. Father, we are eternally grateful for this opportunity to be able to come out to worship you in spirit and truth. Father, we ask your blessing upon this entire world. We ask, Father, that you would heal the nation in your due time. Father, we ask a special blessing for those in the household of faith. We ask, Father, that you would continue to give us the strength and the courage to continue to hold up the bloodstained battle. We ask, Father, that you would just continue to be with us. It's in Christ's name I pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. I believe that Jesus Christ. Online community and Cliff View Church of Christ. We are praying that you had a wonderful worship service. Listen, we want to hear from you. So subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, share the YouTube channel with your friends. Also, go on Facebook. Facebook is your friend. So, we want you to be a part of the Cliff View Church of Christ. Actually, when you type it in for Facebook, it's Church of Christ at Cliff View. We want to hear from you. I also have a couple of announcements for you. You already heard what Brother Heard said, but we have some additional ones. So, um... Post your Easter outfits on Facebook. You know, get with your family, put your Sunday best on. It doesn't have to be all, you know, super professional. We just want to have some pictures of how the kids are looking in their outfits and how the parents are looking so you can take those pictures and post them to Facebook. Also, your prayer request, you can call the church office, you can text us, you can uh, even upload your prayer request on the website. However it's easy for you, we want you to encourage you to do that. And tune in for Wednesday morning and Wednesday evening Bible classes on Facebook. You don't necessarily have to go at 10 a.m. or at 7 p.m. We're going to put them on there. So whenever you get some leisure time on Wednesday, you can view both of those as well. Also, encourage the youth to stay connected and stay involved. How can you stay connected, youth? Group me, Google, Drive, or Instagram. You know, some of the kids told me, Brother Patterson, you old fogey. I said, man, you got a Facebook page? They was like, yo, man, nobody use that no more. Y'all don't have to embarrass me like that, but that's all good. I'm going to get all of y'all back. So, remember those announcements. Stay connected, stay connected, stay connected, and we look forward to seeing you next week. God bless you.